Okay, so welcome then to our level three exam constructed response exam technique class. So we'll be talking a little bit about the level three exam itself and what kind of support we can offer with it, what our main tips are for passing the exam. And um, first I'll give a little bit of background actually about who SHP is, who we are. Okay, so we've got, all right. Okay, so I, I actually founded SHP Financial Training in 2014, and the first qualifications that we offered are the CFA, prep, preparation courses for the CFA exams. I, I'm a CFA charter holder myself, so I've been through all of the exams, I know what it's like, and I know how to help students, and we now have uh, quite a long track record of courses, um, so we're getting better and better, and our students are feeling the benefits. I was also the coordinator of the CFA Society prep course when it was at Ambima, and I took the CFA exams in London with thousands of other people at the Excel Conference Convention Centre. We are the first finance school in Brazil to offer preparation courses or preparatory courses live online. So even in the class today, we've got people in the classroom as well as online participating in the same class. And we also provide financial English report writing and presentation skills, business valuation and in-company courses. And we also provide ACCA, Association of Chartered Certified Accountants courses. They're also, that's also an internationally recognized um, professional certification. We work with BPP material and BPP is actually a university in the UK. I studied with them for CFA and also for my accountancy qualification, and I really, really like their material. They put a lot of time into um, <clears throat> the methodology of the teaching, and it helps to improve pass rates. Really highly recommended. So what is different about SHP? We have small classes with a maximum of 10 students, so that means our students get a lot of additional support, one-on-one -on -one help. We have advanced English communication skills classes also. We have highly qualified tutors who have relevant professional experience. And we have study material of internationally, international quality and a proven study methodology. We also have the flexible learning options with live online, face-to-face -face, and in-company courses. So this is just a little summary of our programs. We've got business valuation, <coughs> financial English, finance and accountancy courses. And we have, as well as workshops and short-term courses, the professional courses in each of these different areas. So you can see CFA um, here. For some reason my pen is picking up on the wrong place, okay? I think it's because of the way that I'm projecting these slides. We also have complimentary classes and lectures like this one. So if you want to come join us and find out a bit more about any of our courses or about general careers in finance, then please do. All participants receive a 10% discount on, on subsequent courses. And it's a really good idea to, to join and get your questions answered and find, out, and find out a bit more about each of these different areas. So keep an eye out on our website for these events. Okay, and our mailing list as well and LinkedIn and Facebook. And for, for anyone who, who is not actually here in, um, in our office, we are located in front of the Consolasal subway station at Alvanida Palista. Our facilities are prepared for executive education, so we have all of the infrastructure which is required to guarantee our students' learning. The classrooms are equipped with flat screen televisions for projecting materials, air conditioning and comfortable chairs and tables. And you can see in the picture on the right how it looks with the online students. So we've got the TV screen there, we've got students in the classroom, and we also have online students joining uh, via WebEx. Some, some photos just for you to have an idea from previous courses and lectures. Top left is a business valuation course and you can see the students with their certificates and a couple of students online as well. Um, top right, we have some representatives from ACCA in London visiting us. And so we've got the students there as well as the ACCA representatives. Bottom left was a course at INSPA that we did um, on financial English. And then bottom right was a lecture, an event at Mackenzie where we talked about careers in finance. Okay. 
So our instructors and lecturers, we have a, a proven teaching methodology. We're the only ACCA Silver Learning Partner in Brazil. And we offer prep courses for ACCA and CFA exams live online, as well as in the classroom in Sao Paulo and Avenida Paulista. Our tutors are all trained through what we call the SHP Financial Training Academy. All of them have professional experience in the financial markets and they've passed the exams that they prepare students for. And our teachers and staff have links to these, some of these, to all of these organizations here in addition to others. Okay, this is just a selection. So a little bit about me. Um, I'm the academic coordinator of the courses here at SHP Financial Training. I've got over three years of full-time training experience and 10 years of professional experience at EY, Ernst & Young, in the UK and in Brazil, and also at the Bank of England, which is the UK central bank. And I have an undergraduate degree in economics and management from Oxford University. I'm a CFA charter holder and a member of the CFA Society of Brazil, so if you go to any of their events, uh, I may well be there. I am the coordinator of the CFA prep course at Ambima. Right, so a little just continuing then. Um, I'm a yeah, CFA chart holder, so I've gone through all of the exams myself. As I mentioned before, I was the coordinator of the CFA prep course at Ambima when it was there. I'm also a chartered accountant, so I'm quite strong on the financial reporting part of the CFA exam. And I have background in valuation as well, and I have passed a couple of the American Society of Appraisers exams. I also have the ACA, ACCA Certificate in International Finance Reporting and the CELTA Certificate of English Language Teaching to Adults. Okay, so you're in good hands, I <laughs> think. Okay, we have a, a committee as well uh, for SHP Financial Training, which means we get all of the help and advice that we need to make sure we are on track and providing excellent service to our students. We have a team of over 20 tutors, 20 professors, and there's a little uh, testimonial here from Lucas, who's one of our CFA students, who, who gave us some nice praise about us being coaches during the preparation for the, for the exam, and we really do try to do that. So we have the small classes, and we offer additional support as much as we can, and we love to get your questions, because it helps us be more effective with our teaching, and ultimately the objective is to get you to pass the exam. <laughs> okay? Um, so we can help you as well with networking and access to job opportunities. So when employers contact us looking for someone to fill a vacancy, we send emails out to our, our mailing list. And we have events with local and international speakers um, whenever we are able to schedule those. Okay, so <laughs> uh, watch this space. All right, just some of our, our tutors from the CFA, so Raphael who has a lot of experience in asset management. Antonio, who has experience in distressed credit and investment, um, yeah, structured finance. Okay. And they're both CFA charter holders. Clarice, who is, she's not a CFA charter holder, but she's past level one, and she's actually studying her doctorate at INSPA, in finance, that is. Hill Martins, who is, also, he's passed all three levels of the CFA Charter Program, and he is actually a lecturer in economics at INSPA. He's a, a very good teacher. So the Luz, who I used to work with at EY in the valuation team, he's a CFA Charter holder. He's a very, very smart guy. Um, and Leticia Filgueras, who works at PwC, she's actually now passed level three. I need to update this. We, in fact, helped her get through the level three exam. And in fact, there is a testimonial on the website from her. So she was very happy with this, this actual course um, that she took last year. Okay. Um, so our clients, we've, we've um, given five CFA prep courses, level one. We've done the CFA level three course once already. So this is the second one. 100% uh, of our students would recommend us to someone else, so we're very happy with the feedback we have got so far. And this is just a list of some of the companies. We tend to have students from bigger banks and companies because generally they're the ones who want to do the professional, the international, internationally recognized professional qualifications. Okay, so we've got some good clients there. These are a couple of testimonials um, which <coughs> I will play later, I think. They are on our website. So we only had two students in the course last year, but both of them passed the exam. 
and both of them were taking the exam for I think the third time so it was <laughs> gratifying that day I was very happy that of course that they both passed and they were very happy too and it really was a question of exam technique so they both needed help with the with putting their thoughts down on the paper so that they got all of the marks and so the course really really helped with that Okay, so we're going to talk <coughs> a little bit about the exam itself and your study plan, then the material and support which we are offering, and then our five most valuable tips for passing the exam the first time, and then we'll have time for some questions and answers. So this, this course that we have is focused on the Constructed Response Exam, which is the essay exam in the morning. And the reason for that is that that is a paper that many people struggle with. And I think it's not partly, it might be because it's in English, but I don't think that's the main thing because even native speakers of English have trouble with this exam. It's, uh, it's challenging because it's different to the, the previous the exam you're used to, which are multiple choice, and also knowing what to put on the paper can be quite tricky. Okay, so you can lose easy marks even when you know the material because you're not following a logical thought process, for example. Um, all right, so the level three exam, <coughs> as you all know, having started to study, will be on the 23rd of June. So it's a bit later this year, which is good. It gives you guys a couple of extra weeks to study, which is good news. The first exam will be from 9 a.m. until midday on the 23rd of June, and that's the Constructed Response or Essay exam. And there are usually between eight and 12 questions. Each question has a number of subparts, so it's broken down, which I think makes it easier because you can see how many marks are awarded for each part, you know how much long to spend on each part of the question. Then it breaks it down so you get more guidance as to what is required. <coughs> um, and then the second exam is the a multiple choice exam with 10 item set questions, which you are used to already from level one, from level two. Okay. And the pass mark is around 53% the 10 year average global pass mark, pass rate. So a bit higher than level one, because you are competing with people at level three who have already passed levels one and two, right? They're already quite committed. They're nearly at the end. They're going to work really hard because they want to get through the exam. So in general, you would expect to have a bit more competition at level three, and the pass rate is overall a little bit higher. Um, we've got the ten, same ten topic areas that we had at levels one and two. And this time the focus is on portfolio management and wealth planning with 40 to 55 percent of the paper in that area. Okay. And that is what we focus on in this constructed response exam technique course. Okay, portfolio management for individual in investors and institutional investors. And we also do some work on asset allocation. Okay, those are the areas that you will to come up every in every exam in the uh, level three written paper. Okay, you're definitely going to get an individual and an institutional investor question, and probably an asset allocation question. So we focus on those. And for anyone who has studied CFA before, these are the changes in 2018, and actually there are quite a few changes, as you can see from this list. I'm not going to go through it in detail because it's not very relevant to anyone who's got who's not studied before. But if you've studied for level three before, this can be useful because then you know what has changed and you can focus on the changes. Okay. So our methodology is learn, practice, consolidate. Okay, and this is a proven <coughs> methodology to help people study for exams. I can see what learning through your initial reading, which you, um, I hope, are doing now, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, so reading through the CFA curriculum or through Schweizer or whatever notes, study notes you have. Mm -hmm. Then we have practice through the HETA Finale, which we've called HETA Finale here, but it's the, the practice is basically doing practice questions, which you should be doing as you go along anyway from the back, end of the, the back of the reading. But we focus in the course on doing more practice questions and we actually correct them or mark them for you. So. The, the course focuses on practicing and consolidating. So practicing through, uh, we have eight hours of classes and 12 hours of preparation. So you actually have three hours of, of work to do in preparation for each class. And I, we ask you to hand in your work so we can correct it before each class. 
And that is really what's going to make the difference because you will actually receive corrected written work and you will see where you're going wrong. So there's three hours of preparation for each class, then we have two hours to debrief the questions that were set as the pre-course work. So you, you submit your work, it's corrected, then you come to the class, we go through it, and you learn from your mistakes, <laughs> okay? Um, and then we also recommend, highly recommend you do the topic-based tests on the CFA Institute website. Okay, so for each topic area, there is a test on the website, and that's, <clears throat> I think those are multiple choice, they are multiple choice questions, okay, but they should be done because they are set by the CFA Institute, okay, the, the examiners. And then we have consolidate, so we recommend you do at least five practice exams. One is a practice exam that we're going to do as part of the course. Another one is the CFA Institute practice exam, and then we recommend that you buy a book of practice exams. Okay, you must do at least five practice exams. So that is going to be 60 hours of time because you should <coughs> budget in your time plan, your study plan, for six hours for each exam plus six hours to review each exam. Okay, sometimes people don't spend long enough reviewing the exams. There is no point in doing an exam and not spending a good amount of time reviewing it, seeing where you went wrong and trying to improve. Okay, so we suggest 12 hours for each exam, which is 60 hours on the consolidate phase. Okay, so in total, you've got 350 hours here. Now, <clears throat> the average successful candidate spends around 300 hours studying. We put 350 in here because quite often people uh, don't quite manage to keep a, to stick to their study plan. So I think if you budget, if you include more hours in your study plan, then it doesn't matter so much if you don't manage to study at every opportunity that you have included in your study plan. Okay, if you are very disciplined and you're able to stick to your study plan, then budget for 300 hours. That will be okay as long as you stick to your plan. And it could be if your knowledge is really good, maybe you don't need to spend so long learning because a lot of the material at level three is based on levels one and two. There is a bit of new material, especially around behavioral finance, and it, you're actually looking at things in a different perspective. So with the portfolio management, you're using the knowledge you had before, but you're making some decisions and recommendations. So it's a different skill that you're learning at level three. You need some time to do that. Okay, so make your study plan now. Hopefully you already have a study plan or you got into some kind of routine with your study already. If not, it's time to look at your study plan again. Uh, the exam is not easy. Okay, we know, we know that. Many students struggle with the constructive response paper as well. Okay, um, and as I just, as I just said, the average is successful candidate spends 300 hours studying for each exam. Um, you need to take frequent breaks and you need to be realistic about what you want to achieve. Okay, So it's not going to help you to have a study plan that says you're going to study every day during the week for four hours. Hardly anyone will manage to do that because we will work hard, we're tired from working, it's difficult to study effectively for four hours during the week on a weekday. So be realistic. I would recommend, unless you have an unusual type of routine at work, that you study for a maximum of two hours on a work day. I think it'd be difficult to study for much more than that, study effectively anyway. And I mean, when I was studying, I used to study on Saturday. So you just need to find what works for you when you're not, you should not be too tired when you're studying. Okay. So how to do this? Um, you might consider taking the week off work if the week before the exam off work. I did that for all of my exams. It might be because you've got a couple of extra weeks before the exam this year that maybe you don't need that, but it really depends on your schedule. And if you're not going to take the week off work, the week before the exam, then you need to sit in the practice exams in the weekends. And we just said 12 hours per practice exam and five practice exams. So that basically means five weekends. Okay, which means starting those practice exams in May, right? So that's by something to consider. May. Exactly, yeah, by the end of May, yeah. Um, print out and use your study plan. So we have a template study plan for students, and actually it's on a subsequent slide, so you'll get an idea of it in a minute. And that study plan also has a list of all of the readings, which you can print out and tick once you have completed them. And what we recommend is you complete your initial reading by the end of April. 
maybe could be into May, given that the exam date has moved, um, and plan to do five. The exam always used to be the first Saturday of June. Okay, it was a bit of a surprise to, that it moved. But anyway, um, so complete the initial reading by the end of April and plan to do five practice exams, including the date to review each one to give yourself a higher chance of success. Okay, so how does our course work? It starts on the 9th of April. Okay, so we've got a little bit of time still before the course starts. Um, the reason why it doesn't start until the 9th of April is because it is focused on the written paper, okay? So you should be focusing on doing the learning at home, reading the material. Then when it comes to the course, as I, I mentioned before, we will ask you to do pre-course, uh, pre-class work before each class, okay? Around three hours. So for example, class one on the 9th of April, we'll ask you to complete practice problems one to five and nine to 11 from reading eight, okay? And after completing those, we'll ask you to send your answers to us, we will correct them, and then we will give feedback in the class, okay? So again, you, you need to, to be disciplined, committed to the course to make sure that you're following with, keeping up with the program so that you get the maximum amount of the classes. Okay? And you can see we've got the 23rd of April second class, class two has homework, class three, class four, okay? And class four is a past exam paper, okay? Now this is actually the program from last year, just to let you know. So it's gonna be very similar, but maybe we'll do a more recent exam paper. Okay, I need to check that still. So, but it will be an exam paper, you'll need to do the whole paper and we'll mark it for you. Any questions so far? Uh, is, there, is there only four classes? Yes. And from May 21st to... Yeah, so then you have a month to do the um, practice exam. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what about if I have any doubts on some specific yeah. uh, matters? Yeah. Specific yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So if you have any questions about anything, you can just email us or send a WhatsApp message. We have, have a WhatsApp group as well. And I will be more than happy, happy to help you with those. Okay. Like, I, it's actually quite good to hear people's questions because um, you start to get a feel for what people are struggling with and everyone has problems in the same areas generally. So it's, it's quite good to, um, to hear your questions and help you with those. Um, okay, so this is what the study plan looks like. It's a bit small, but it's an Excel spreadsheet and the, the kind of table up there is, shows the run up to the exam. So you've got how many weeks before the exam, okay, and then you put in the number of hours you're going to spend uh, in class, studying at the weekend, studying at night, other time, um, each week, okay, and then the idea is to get up to 300 or 350 hours in total. And um, so, as you know from your levels one and two studies, sacrifices have to be made. Um, if you start late, if you don't study enough, it's likely you'll, you'll fail because it's very difficult to catch up later. Uh, now until April, you should focus on learning or read, reading through the material. Um, and then May, intensive review and consolidation. Okay, and also some of June as well. Okay. Um, so structure of curriculum, we have 34 readings, level three. Okay, split into six volumes again, as it is for levels one and two. Um, pay close attention to the learning outcome statements as always. What are you required to do? All of the exam questions will relate to one or more learning outcome statements. They won't test you on anything that is not in the learning outcome statement. So if you're comfortable and understand all of the learning outcome statements, then you should pass the exam. Okay? As long as you're okay with the written part. <laughs> okay. So that's why practice questions is so important to, to practice the written written part in particular, okay, which you're not used to because it's new. Um, okay, so in addition to the CFA program curriculum, topic-based tests, which are on the CFA Institute website, and past exam papers, our students receive study plans, a study plan, study guides, okay, on private wealth management, institutional investors, and asset allocations. Those study, study guides provide tips for the written questions in those areas. 
Gates support. So get your questions answered by our tutors. So if you have any questions, if you just email us or send a WhatsApp message, we use WhatsApp as well, um, then we will answer your question and as quickly as we can. And then uh, individual feedback. So you'll get your written answers corrected by us. Um, so students should be very well prepared for the exam. There is a little note here about prep providers. So you know there are alternate. You don't. Some students prefer to use Schweizer instead of the CFA program curriculum. And I was speaking to Diana about this just before we started the class. Um, Schweizer is, I would say, can be quite useful for levels one and two because you can go through the material more quickly because it, it summarizes it. However, at level three. There, aren't, there isn't actually too much volume in the CFA curriculum itself. So I think that the value of Schweizer is lower at level three. I don't think there's much point in using Schweizer. If you put the books, the physical books in a pile, the CFA ones and the Schweizer ones, they're about the same size. So there's really not, doesn't make that much difference. And I think actually reading the source, the text itself from CFA Institute is better because that's the original that's written by the exam examiners. Um, and I think it's you might as well stick with that. We'll also save you some money. <laughs> My recommendation. But you know, it doesn't matter too much as long as the important thing is to know the material. Okay, so that and has to be your project. What about for uh, Africa and yeah. the, the volume 6, the kids? Uh, I think that's that one. Volume 1, Ethics. 1 and 6. Um, and, okay, yes, skip. Okay, um, yes. Yeah. So definitely for ethics, even at levels one and two, you should read the standards of professional conduct, the original text from CFA Institute, focusing on the examples, the situations, because that's what you're tested on in the exam. And then the GIPS, yes, read the CFA Institute material too. But GIPS is a whole load of learning. It's just you've got to learn the rules, and they're just the rules are the rules. You can't really summarise the rules anyway that much. So. And there's a lot to learn for GIPS at level three. It gets quite detailed. So, yeah. So I use the CFA. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Or yeah. 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 You mentioned that you guys provide the past exams, but I only saw on the on the four day cor course that you provide only one. Is that it, or do yeah. you did more than that? That's yeah, that's a good question. So yes, you will need to buy a, a book of practice exams. Um. So the reason, I mean, we can buy one for you, um, and then we can, so I recommend the BPP book of practice exams. We have a level one course running now, and all of those, the students on the level one course will use the BPP book of practice exams. So I can get a quotation for that and send it to you. We use a book importer to, to import the books because we have some issues with import taxes. <laughs> so that makes them a tiny bit more expensive, or you can buy them online. You can buy um, online versions, ebooks of the practice exams. I think from Schweizer, from BPP, probably from Wiley. There are a number of options. So if you want me to give you some guidance on that, I can. Okay. Which was more complete? I mean, they're all good. I like the BPP ones because I studied with BPP, and I think that they, I think the quality is the best in terms of the. They really they make a good review of the curriculum each year and update the materials and I've not noticed any mistakes <laughs> and I think that the exams generally tend to be a little bit harder than the real exam, at least in my experience. So that means you're fully prepared. You know, you want to go into the exam and find it easier than you think it's gonna be, rather than harder, you know. Well, <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, yes, I suppose there's that. But, you know, I think it's better to worry before rather than right in the exam when you think, oh my goodness, I'm not ready. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll do a little bit of research on the, on the books for you, okay? And give you a bit of guidance on that. Okay. The reason why I haven't done that already is because Sometimes people have already bought Schweizer, for example, in the pack, which includes a practice exam book. So this is why we're not including the books as part of the course. Because usually when people get to level three, they've already got a preference to study material and things. Um, but if you, if you don't have a preference for anything, in partic any particular provider, I would recommend BPP. Okay. So I will send you information about that.
Does that answer your question? For the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So tips for passing the exams. CFA is all about resource planning. Uh, all of these five things really, but resource planning, so clearing other commitments so you can focus on your studies, taking the week off before the exam if you think you need to, if you're not able to study the weekends, you need to fit in the time to do the practice exam, plan, 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 and you've got 300 hours at least of studying to fit in. Okay. Number two is about focus, so focusing on the right things. Some concepts are more highly examined than others, so get some guidance on this. At levels one and two, it's a, there's a lot of learning and there's a lot of quite a few calculations, although more and more they're testing the concepts. But at level three, it really is concepts and recommendations, okay, which is reflected in the written paper. Number three, practice. Okay, so complete practice questions and do mock exams in a place where you will not be interrupted. So it's important to do the mock exams under time conditions. Um, without interruptions, so you get used to sitting there for three hours and working through the exam. Okay, and then number four, review. So review the questions you got wrong. Why did you get them wrong? Okay, and make sure you don't make the same mistakes again. And we recommend you make a list of the things that you find difficult to remember, and um, so you can keep reviewing it until you've got that list, that final list to look at just before the exam. And then discipline. So this is about starting early and keep keeping up with your study plan in order to be successful. Okay. And so the course is all focused around these five um, tips. So resource planning, we help you, you plan your studies outside the classroom. So that means we will set written work for you to do each week before the class. Um, the, the course you can see, it's quite a short course because to be honest, by the time you get to level three, you're probably going to be quite good at studying yourself. And we wanted to focus just on exam technique for the level three paper, for the written paper, because I think that's where we can add most value. We could have a longer course, but uh, we decided to just focus it on the, the, the written paper. Okay, so it's very specialist. Um, discipline. You'll be required to, required to complete homework assignments for each class and will maintain study discipline by accompanying the classes. So by the end of the, the course, you're going to be pretty good at the written papers, the exam technique. Okay? And then you're going to have time to spend doing the practice exams after the course is finished. Okay? So you should be in a really good position by the time it comes to the exam. Focus. The course will help you focus on exam technique and help you maximize your marks in the written paper. And we will cover the concept topics which are most likely to be examined. Practice through reviewing your, doing practice questions and reviewing your answers to exam questions. So you're able to apply your knowledge and understanding to earn marks in the exam. But it's just quite common to find out, hear from people who maybe didn't get through level three and they, they scored like eighty percent on the multiple choice question and then you know the or above the seventy percent in brown uh, mark, uh, what do you call it category for the multiple choice question and then failed over multiple choice paper and then failed overall so all the topics from the multiple choice question. So it is really sometimes not the technical knowledge that's letting people down, it's putting it on the paper and getting the marks in the written part. Okay. And then the final thing here, review. So we will mark your written work. And this is really one of the major benefits of the course. You're going to get individual feedback on your written work. And that will help you identify where you're going wrong and so you can improve. Okay, so why study with us? Um, well, we are here to help you pass the exam, help you prepare actually to pass the exam. We can't do it for you, unfortunately. But <laughs> um, so all the tutors the team have been through the CFA experience, and we appreciate the challenges you are facing. You're not on your own. I think that's another another nice thing about joining a course. I did courses when I was studying; quite enjoyed being with other people. Um, so we are here to guide you through the syllabus and help you focus on what you need for success. And we have a, a learning formula, methodology, we're passionate about what we do, we do, so that means you are in safe hands. Okay. And so some, some factors, some things to consider. We've got an experienced, highly qualified and trained team. We have small classes. I think that this course will be 
it says max 15, usually we say max 10. I don't think we're going to have that many students. I mean, let's see. But um, there is going to be a maximum of 10 in the classroom, because the classroom is small. Um, and then some of those online, but I mean, really, like I said, last year we just had two students, so um, you're likely to get a lot of individual attention. Okay. Um, we have live online and recordings, which gives you flexibility. So if you are unable to attend the, the if you're a face-to-face -face student and you can't come to the classroom for some reason, you can watch online. And we also record the classes, so that means you can watch them later. We keep the recordings for a week, that's just in case you miss a class. Okay. And for anyone uh, who is near to Avenida College in Sao Paulo, we have a really good location right next to Ponte La Salle Metro Station. And then excellent value for money. All material is included, and we have small class sizes. Okay, so that's good. Um, and we have a special offer for participants of this class, which is a 10% discount on the course. And early booking discounts. And our next deadline is the 28th of February, so just in a couple of days, we've got a deadline, price deadline. Okay, so contact us for more information. And we have time for some questions and answers. And about the pricing, I will pass the pricing to you later. Okay, I don't want to put it into this. Uh, um, so any questions that are not related to the price yet at the moment? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did I answer all of your questions? Is there anything? No, anything I missed or anything you're worried about? No. Yeah, nothing on my side. I think I'm fine. Okay. All right. Thanks, Diana. Mm -hmm. Gina. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there is possible to serve all the curriculum through the CSA curriculum, the official book? Yes. Yeah. But I think I won't have time to finish all of them because I, at this time, I already uh, studied uh, the volume two and three, and I'm in the middle of volume four. And I think I won't have time to finish all of the, the three that is missing, three and a half that is missing by the the ninth of April. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, mm -hmm. there is only one month. Yeah. Okay, so to do that, so I, I'll send you our study plan, and in the study plan, you've got a list of all of the readings and a recommended number of hours to spend on each reading. So you can work out how much time you need in order to read everything, and then how much time you have. <laughs> and you can do a matching exercise to see how much time you've got if you're going to manage to read everything. If you don't manage to read everything, that's still okay because you will have time in between the classes and you will also have, well, you will have time in between the classes. I don't think you, you shouldn't still be reading at the end of the course, otherwise you're far behind. But um, you can, as long as you prioritize the readings which we cover in class, it will be fine if you haven't quite finished all of the readings. Okay. Yeah. But for, for the first class, which volume I should have studied to be okay with the class? Um, okay, so you need to just check back, and I can I'll send you. Um, when I send you the study plan, it has the timetable in for the classes and what content we're going to cover in each one. So you can work out from that. Um, in each class. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's all in the study plan. Actually, the study plan is really useful. So it has a list of all of the readings that need to be done all of the CFA curriculum readings. It's got the study plan where you put your num the number of hours you're going to study uh, each weekend whenever in the run-up to the exam. And it's got the class timetable and it's got what you need to do in preparation for each class. Yeah, so you can use that to help you. Okay. okay. Um, any other questions? And the recording then.